Here we have the Veritas Dowel Maker. The main parts are this insert which guides the wood as it goes through the cutters. We have these bushings that go on the back that guides the wood as it comes out so it doesn't wobble all over the place. The bolts on the back adjust the projection of the blades, which changes the initial rough cut diameter and the final cut diameter of the dowel. To use this contraption, first we need to set up the t You might say to yourself, this thing comes with directions. And if I follow the directions, everything's going to work out. No, you're better off not following the directions, because if you follow the directions, this happens. My setup was clearly easier to execute, but the results speak for themselves. When you set this up the way that I'm about to describe, everything works way better for any type of wood. And my setup couldn't be any simpler. Look in the manual and for any odd numbered front offset, increase it to the next size. The most obvious cause is that taking too big of a cut causes the wood to be ripped out rather than cut out. In some woods though, having a thin diameter going into the rear cutter causes the corner to catch, and you end up with this screw effect. But if you increase the diameter going into the rear cutter, this doesn't happen. I like to make a 9 16 inch stick, which requires a 3 quarter inch blank. Using a 3 quarter inch piece of MDF makes setting up my table saw for this super simple. And now we have a perfectly shaped dowel that we can put in our lathe chuck, tighten it down till we're nice and comfortable with it flying at 3000 RPM, and then we just turn on the lathe, and let her go, and then we have to consider the multi-dimensional profile of the tip of the stick because that changes how the drums sound and how you play changes how the stick interacts with the drums or cymbals. This stick has a fairly large profile when I do something like a rim shot, but if I lift it up to hit a cymbal, well, not much contact area. But I could make this all smaller by making the tip smaller. Or I can make it bigger by making the tip bigger. There's lots of choices to make. There's hundreds of great videos on skew chisel usage, which is the tool I would suggest, and turning spindles. So I'm not going to tell you how to use that. I'm going to assume that you've made something that looks like a stick and are ready for the next step. Now we have something that looks kind of like a stick. So do you sand it like this? Or... Do you sand it on the lathe like this? Here's a macro photograph of cross grain sanding. Sanding across the grain on the lathe. It's pretty rough and I can tell you from experience this will give you blisters on your hands. And here's sanding along the grain of the stick. With the exact same image processing and the exact same sandpaper. This is clearly superior and it feels much nicer. Now you've basically finished your stick and you need to protect it and give it some extra strength. So you reach for some sort of drying oil, and that doesn't offer any protection or strength, and it takes forever to dry. So then you reach for some polyurethane, which does offer protection, but it takes forever to dry, it's difficult to apply, and you can't repair it. And repairability is a big thing with drumsticks. So maybe some water-based acrylic? Well, that's basically the same thing as polyurethane, except for it dries a bit faster. No win there. Then you think, I'm going to be more classic, and I'll reach for some lacquer, because that's repairable, and it offers protection, but it takes forever to dry. So if you have some patience, lacquer is a great option. But there's something that ticks every checkbox. 
and it's shellac. And shellac is awesome. It's repairable, it's strong, it's flexible enough, it dries in minutes. That's what you should use on your drumsticks. Unless you're willing to do some sort of two-part catalyzed spray job, nothing's gonna beat shellac. So this is clearly a lot of effort and a lot of equipment. So why would you wanna make your own sticks? Firstly, you can utilize a wide selection of woods to make things that you couldn't possibly buy. You can make your sticks out of a really hard wood that would probably destroy your hands, or you can make it out of a really exotic wood that would make you cry when your sticks break. Or you can make it out of an imported wood that's more expensive than the exotic wood. Or maybe a soft wood that'll break in your first track, or just use hard maple or ash or hickory or whatever. Let's talk about cost. First, we'll assume that a retail pair of sticks is about $11. The wood for your sticks costs about 60 cents per pair of sticks. Then we'll put together a formula where Y is the cost of equipment, T is the time spent per stick, and R is your hourly rate or how much your time is worth. We solve for X and that tells us how many sticks we need to make before we come out on top and have achieved ultimate value. So let's solve one of these and see how many sticks you need to make to cover the cost of your equipment and the equivalent cost of buying retail sticks. We'll assume $200 in equipment was purchased, which is very cheap, 30 minutes per stick, which is very achievable, and $15 per hour of your time. And that's assuming that a retail pair of sticks still costs $11 and that you're gonna spend about 60 cents per pair of sticks on the wood that you use. So I'm just going to step through the math here so you can see how this is done. And eventually we're gonna find out that we need to make, ah, uh, 69 pairs of sticks, which is a lot of sticks. But there's a problem. If your T and R values multiply to be worth more than a retail stick, then you can really never catch up because your time is worth more than buying a stick. So if your time is worth anything, then it's not really worth it, but if your enjoyment is worth anything, then you can do things like make sticks out of exotic woods, make sticks out of normal woods that you can't buy in the store. This is, this is ash. You make big sticks. You can make, you know, hot rod sticks, bundle sticks up together. Those are cool. You make normal sticks. You make all sorts of sticks. And if you use shellac, got a can of shellac right here. If you use shellac, you can repair your sticks. You just take one of these guys, you dump them in here, put a new finish on it, newly protected. I mean, the sticks last 30% longer, 50% longer sometimes. Plus, there's ways to repair the sticks that I might cover in another video to make your sticks last super long time. Either way, you still have to buy equipment. It's up to you. You don't have to buy the dowel maker. You can use just a lathe. You can use a drill on some plywood. You know, make it work. Use your brain. You can do all sorts of things. I mean, you could do. You can make a drumstick for 25 bucks in total equipment cost. I've done it. It doesn't come out the greatest until you practice a bit, but it works. So, this is how I do it. I hope this was an informational video. It was a fun video. AdamWombie.com, patreoncom slash This video took me 19 to 20 hours to make. It's a lot of time. AdamWombie.com has a text-based article with a lot more information than this, including some interesting looks into steady rest mechanics. Have a good day.